Your Massachusetts real estate market update for March 21st, 2023. Now look, this market is turning out to be nothing like you expected. As always, we're gonna talk about the single family market as well as the condo market here in the state of Massachusetts. What's happening with current listings, what's going on under agreement and solds in these markets. We're also gonna chat about interest rates and current economic events, cause they really do matter. And for the luxury home of the week, we're headed into the back bay in Boston. We're going to the Four Season residence this place that we're looking at first time on the market the condo fee is over ten thousand dollars per month so you got to check it out with me hi i'm jeff chubb i'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent i've sold more than a thousand houses if you have any questions in regards to the real estate market then know i'm here to help but first, before we jump into the single family segment, I wanted to talk about the current state of the market because buyers that are entering the market, they're shocked. And it's understandably so because it's everything different than what they said. We're working with a client that found this home at 36 Beale Street in Rockland. It was listed for $449,000. Now our clients bid about 7% more than their asking price and they weren't even in the conversation. From our understanding, this house went over $530,000, which is uh, a little above 18% more than its asking price. Look, that's not confirmed. That's just from our understanding and having conversations. Nothing's official until it actually finally closes, right? But it really gives you an idea in regards to how crazy the certain price points of this market really are, especially that under $600,000 segment, because not only did it go for 18% above asking price, Unsurprisingly so, they also waived their home inspection. Now there are a couple things to consider here, both from the buyer as well as the seller side. The first one is that this market is a lot stronger than a lot of people let on and, and believe. It's it's decreased in the amount of sales, but also like I've said, it's decreased in the amount of listings, which is just still making it for a very strong market. The other thing is on the seller side is that if you are a seller, and you list your house with another agent and they bring you 20 or more offers, then they have done you a disservice and they have not read the market properly in pricing your home to the current conditions of the marketplace. In other words, believe it or not, if an agent brings you 20, 15, whatever, a lot of offers like that, then they have failed in doing their job for you and done a really poor job in representing you. Now, let's jump into the single family home segment. The amount of inventory for single family homes ticked up slightly to 2,937 units that are currently on the market. Now, this is up 23 units from last week. More inventory is great, but it fell behind the gain that we saw in the same week last year. We now have 786 more houses to look at today than we did if you compare it to the same week last year, which actually is a decrease from last week when we had 957 more units on the market, but kind of in line with two weeks ago when we had 725 more houses to look at. So it looks like last week might've just been an outlier when we jumped up to the 957 units. And ultimately, as it seems as that 700 ranges, 700 more houses that are currently on the market is really the range that is, is what our, our everyday markets like, which only 700 more single families to look at than the hottest market ever. We need more inventory. That's what it continues to, to be. That's what our need in this marketplace continues to be is we need more inventory. We're not going to see any price corrections until this happens. And if this inventory levels continue to stay like this, then we're going to see price gains this year. We had 775 homes that came on the market this week. Now, this is down slightly from 813 last week, but this marks three weeks now in a row where we have seen new listings coming on the market in the high 700 to low 800 range, which is a great thing because as spring market comes, we're gonna to start to see an increase in buyer demand. So it's good that we're seeing the increase in seller supply to kind of go toe for toe with it in the marketplace. But the issue continues to be that while new New inventory is fantastic. It is falling drastically behind the levels that we saw last year. Same week last year, we saw 1,072 single family homes come to the marketplace. That is a lot of inventory, especially in our current numbers and current marketplace. But when you put it in perspective, that is 
a 28% decrease in the amount of new inventory that came on the market this week compared to the same week last week. Meanwhile, we had another strong week for pennings. We had 807 single family homes go under agreement this week. Now the four week rolling average is 705 units. So this was a pretty significant level above. And while it was a strong week compared to this year, when you compare it to last year, we were actually 21% behind the amount of pendings that happened last year when there were 1,021 single family homes that went under agreement. So just something to take note here, right? New listings, they were down 28%. Oh, there you go, 28%. And then the sales were down 21%, which leaves us that 7% in balance there. And that is something that we need to continue to keep our eye on. There were 423 single family homes that sold last week for an average sales price of $800,000 and a median sales price of $552,000. Now, you'll notice that that average sales price was a big spike, a lot higher than the 700, low 700s that we're kind of normally used to. And that is because there were two single family homes that sold in the 10 to $20 million range, which helped push up and skew that average sale price number and the median sale prices just around where we would expect it. And then months of inventory. This is how we gauge how hot of a market it is. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. The closer to zero that it is, the stronger seller's market that it is. And this week, months of inventory actually ticked up to 1.4 three months from last week's 1.33 months. So this continues to say that it is a very strong seller's market. However, the months of inventory would have us start to believe or start us to show that the market is slightly, very slightly weakening for sellers. I mean, like, very, very, very slightly weakening for sellers. Now on to the condo market. In the condo market, as of Monday, we had 1,921 condos that were on the market. Inventory, it moved up by 39 units from last week, but it's now 12% higher than it was just 28 days ago. That's the good news. But the bad news is, is that we're not keeping pace with where we were this time last year. And the amount of additional inventory that was on the market as of today compared to today last year is actually 243 units, but this is compared to last week when we had 367 additional condos for a buyer to look at. There are 410 newly listed condos that came on the market this week. The four week rolling average is 390, so we're right on pace there, but when we compare it to the same week last year, oh man, it, it really hurts. We were 34.3% behind the same week last year when 624 new condos came on the market, 34%. We had 374 condos go under agreement last week. Now our four week rolling average is 360 units. So we're right in line there, not too far off, but where we are really far off are this the same week last year when we are 33.6% below the numbers of last year when 563 condos went under agreement. That means that new listings were down 34% and then under agreements were down 33.6%. So we can pretty much call that toe for toe, no? There were 215 condos that sold last week for an average sales price of $630,000 and that median sales price of $530,000. Then that months of inventory actually moved up to 2.16 months from last week's 2.01 months. Do you like hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market and finding out what's going on week by week? Then make sure you hit that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. So I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And subscribing, that doesn't hurt either. So feel free to do that one as well. Well, it wasn't a great week for interest rates. They were up a little bit. I mean, it could have been worse, but could also have been better. Now the Fed actually meets this week. They meet on Wednesday. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what they say, but check this article out, cause it's pretty interesting. The Fed will still raise rates in March and that's why rates may keep falling. It seems a little backwards, no? As for the current week, the drop in rates was driven not only by the flight to safety, but also the expectation that the Fed will be able to start cutting rates by the end of the year. So interest rates are going up in order for mortgage rates to go down. I mean, this is all making sense, right? The big thing that happened this weekend was that Credit Suisse issue that was like a black cloud hanging over the world economy. Well, we can put that aside. And that's because UBS actually stepped in and bought Credit Suisse for the bargain of $3 billion, which really tell, I mean, they were one of the largest banks in the world and they were just bought for $3 billion. I mean, it just gives you an idea of how big of a fire sale that was and gives you an idea of how big of a world economy issue that that bank actually posed to us. 
And not only that, in order for UBS to buy them, the Swiss government actually had to backstop the deal in giving UBS a line of credit. These may not be the craziest times in our world, but they're definitely sporty. And in the last week, you've actually seen an uptick in the amount of layoffs. For example, uh, Facebook or Meta, they just announced an additional 10,000 people that they're going to be laying off. Meanwhile, yesterday, Amazon announced an additional 9,000 people. That's after the 18,000 that they had already announced. So these companies, they're really starting to pick up their layoff pace, which is something we need to keep our eye on because obviously the broader economy, well, that equals to people's ability, their confidence in going out and purchasing real estate. But now let's jump to the luxury home of the week. Unit 5703 at One Dalton Place is being offered directly from the developer and what they built as the most luxurious award-winning residential building in the Back Bay. Now, this is a two-bedroom plus a flex space that can be used as a bedroom or home office and three full and one-half baths. Uh, it's a condo that spans 3,265 square feet. It's located on the 57th floor and is a direct entry unit that also has an outdoor balcony. Now, now it has one valet parking space and being on the 57th floor the unit has expansive cityscape and water views of the back bay south end boston harbor as well as the boston islands inside you're going to find a sun-soaked unit with floor to ceiling windows a stunning kitchen and bathrooms plus mind free living with the five star management and personalized service of the four season staff and i had to obviously ask so therefore i couldn't afford it but the condo fees are ten thousand two hundred and seventy one dollars per month but don't worry as they do include heat and hot water. The condo is being marketed for $12.3 million. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs and all of my contact information, it's in the description below. You can also reach out to me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Just fill out a couple questions with your information and then I'm going to reach out to you, whatever works best for you. Whether you're looking to move in the next nine or 90 days, it doesn't matter. I'd love to hear about your real estate goals and ultimately see if there's a way that I can help you because sometimes proper planning, well, it can prevent poor performance, especially in this crazy market. Questions or comments about any any of this market data then drop me a line in the comment section below i always love hearing from you folks you take the time to watch the video so i'm always going to take the time to respond to you and as i always say an informed person is a powerful person so until next time